Today I have a quick update on some topics that I previously told you about. Remember I explained the issue with the missing electromagnetic counterparts to gravitational wave detections? In a recent paper a group of physicists from Russia claimed they had evidence for the detection of a gamma ray event coincident with the gravitational wave detection from a binary neutron star merger. They say they found it in the data from the Integral Satellite Mission. Their analysis was quickly criticized informally by other experts in the field, but so far there is no formal correspondence about this. So the current status is that we are still missing confirmation that the LIGO and Virgo gravitational wave interferometers indeed detect signals from outer space. So much about gravitational waves. There is also news about dark energy. Last month I told you that a new analysis of the supernova data showed that they can be explained without dark energy. The supernova data, to remind you, are the major evidence that physicists have for dark energy. And if that evidence does not hold up, that's a big deal, because the discovery of dark energy was awarded a Nobel Prize in 2011. However, that new analysis of the supernova data was swiftly criticized by another group. This criticism, to be honest, did not make much sense to me because they picked on the use of the coordinate system, which was basically the whole point of the original analysis. In any case, the authors of the original paper then debunked the criticism. And that is still the status today. Quantum Magazine was happy to quote a couple of astrophysicists saying that the evidence for dark energy from supernovae is sound without giving further reasons. Unfortunately, this is a very common thing to happen. Someone or a group goes and challenges a widely accepted result, then someone else criticizes the new work, so far so good. But after this, what frequently happens is that everybody else, scientists as well as the popular science press, will just quote the criticism as having sorted out the situation, just so that they do not have to think about the problem themselves. I do not know, but I am afraid that this is what is going on. I was about to tell you more about this, but something better came to my mind. The lead author of the supernova paper, Zubir Zarkar, is located in Oxford, and I will be visiting Oxford next month. So I asked if he would be in for an interview, and he kindly agreed on that. So you will have him explain his work himself. Speaking of supernovae, there was another paper just a few days ago that claimed that actually supernovae are not very good standards for standard candles and that indeed their luminosity might just depend on the average age of the star that goes supernova. Now, if you look at more distant supernovae, the light has had to travel for a long time to reach us, which means they are on the average younger. So if younger stars that go bang have a different luminosity than older ones, that introduces a bias in the analysis that can mimic the effect of dark energy. Indeed, the author of that new paper also claimed that one does not need dark energy to explain the observations. This gives me somewhat of a headache because these are two different reasons for why dark energy might not exist, which raises the question, what happens if you combine them? Maybe that makes the expansion too slow? Also, I said this before, but let me emphasize that again. The supernova data are not the only evidence for dark energy. Someone's got to do a global fit of all the available data before we can draw conclusions. One final point for today, the well-known particle physicist Mikhail Schiffman has an article on the archive that could best be called an opinion piece. It is titled Musings on the Current Status of High Energy Physics. In this article he writes, Low energy supersymmetry is ruled out and gone with it is the concept of naturalness, a basic principle which theorists cherished and followed for decades. And in a footnote he adds, by the way, this principle has never been substantiated by arguments other than aesthetical. This is entirely correct and one of the main topics in my book Lost in Math. Naturalness, to remind you, was the main reason so many physicists thought that the Large Hadron Collider should see new particles besides the Higgs boson, which has not happened. The principle of naturalness is now pretty much dead because it's just in conflict with observation. However, the particle physics community has still not analyzed how it could possibly be that such a large group of people for such a long time based their research on an argument that was so obviously non-scientific. 
something has seriously gone wrong here and if we do not understand what, it can happen again. That's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe.